All right, guys, welcome back to MMA Unhinged. Today I'm joined by UFC lightweight Brock Weaver. How's it going, Brock? Good, man. Uh, got home, uh, resting, uh, getting ready for strength and conditioning later on. You just get back from training? Yeah, about an hour ago. Yeah, how was training? Hard, man. Are the coaches pushing you at ATT? Yeah, yeah, man. They um, they they they're on me, and uh, it, it was really pushing. It's just the the partners, the high level partners, and just the variety of them, just different looks, man. At the highest level, you know, you might have a boxer, maybe going against some Muay Thai guy. You might be going against a kickboxer, or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artist, or um, a real high level collegiate wrestler, you know, and and then you got guys that 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 are mixing it up real good, like, you know, uh probably the hardest guy I went with so far is uh Renato Moicano. And he's uh he he's a killer. He's he's probably like hands down one of the best uh all around guys in the gym. So uh mixing it up with him is uh it's brutal, but I already feel myself getting better, you know. So if I'm correct, do you move to ATT after your last fight versus Roosevelt Roberts? Yes. yes. Yeah. What, what's the transition like? How's it? How's it been like? Are the, are the coaches much better than than you was in in the camp before? Uh, the coaching. Uh, I, I have some pretty good coaches at home. Uh, yeah. So I wouldn't say that the coaches are better, but you got different looks uh, as coaches. You know. That's always good to uh, always uh, keep your mind open and uh, learn something new. Um, sometimes you can get burnt out learning the same thing with with the coaches. But like I said, the the biggest thing about ATT is the variety of partners that are showing up every day that are uh, extremely high level. Back home, I probably had two to three guys that were pushing me uh, here. You got 15 to 18 to on a good day, 20 guys that are all pushing you in, in all different levels of uh, MMA. Uh, if I'm correct, before you went to ATT, did you do a little bit with uh, Jason Knight but, but while leading up to your BKFC debut? Yeah, yeah. Me, me and Jason have been training together for on and off for a long time. He lives right there at the uh, Mississippi line, and I'm right there in Mobile. So it ain't nothing but an hour 15 drive for either or for me to go to him, him to come to us, and uh, – yeah, me and, me, and, me and the kids been mixing it up since we were kids, so. What was it like learning from a, basically a UFC vet? He's had a lot of fights in the UFC, so what was it like to learn learn some, you know, some techniques or some little tips and tricks from Jason Knight? Uh, me and Jason don't really learn anything from each other. We just pretty much spar. and Just go at each other. Yeah, we... Yeah. Uh, if anything, I've I've always been a better a better boxer than Jason, and he's always been uh, better at jiu-jitsu than me. So uh, I'd beat him up in boxing, and he'd rubber guard me, and and, and when we roll, so it's about all me and Jason's ever did was just beat each other up. So, so in your first uh, in your first UFC fights, you went uh, one and one, and in the first fight, you fought uh, Rodrigo Vargas, and you won that fight due to Vargas doing disqualification with an illegal knee. Did that win kind of feel like a proper win, or do you feel like you need to get your hand raised properly in the UFC? No, no, I don't take that as a win. Uh, to me, I'm 0-2, you know, and uh, out here training to get better, to get my hand raised, man. You know, that's what I've, I've least, that's what I've yet to experience is my hand raised properly in a UFC fight. In your second fight in the UFC, you fought Roosevelt Roberts, and there was a lot of tension in that fight leading up. What was the backstory between the tension and that? What, what kind of went on for the tension to be in that fight? Uh, pretty much, I, I always try to get in people's head. Uh, it's just a mental game I like to play. If I can get the guy to be beat mentally, then it's just going to make the fight a little easier for me sometimes. Uh, I had a horrible weight cut. I went in... Uh, I cut 30 pounds in nine days on a short notice fight. So, uh, you know, I, I was a little grumpy that day and, and I, I walked in and I mugged him and I guess he didn't like me mugging him. And uh, we, we said some words and then we got into face off and said some more words. And uh, so 
I mean, you know, he, you know, uh, I respect him. He went in there, he done his thing. He beat me, hands down. You know, everybody could say I had a bad weight cut, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. No excuses. I still chose to fight. Uh, I could have backed out of the fight on fight day and still got paid the same that I did to took to the L. The doctor uh, or the UFC wanted me to back out because of uh, I was I was cramping up real bad after the weigh-ins and uh, could possibly had a acute kidney failure. But uh, I chose to fight. I took my L like a man, and uh, I told Roosevelt we'll meet again in the middle if 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 he uh, gets some more wins. I get some more wins. We'll meet in the top ten. We'll meet again in the middle. If not, oh well, you know. Uh, he, he, he won, if it's the only time we ever fought. He won, no excuse. So you uh, you fought Rodrigo Vargas and Roosevelt Roberts in your first two UFC fights. When is uh, the third one going to come? When are you looking to get back into there, into the octagon? Um, right now I'm training and getting better, getting my weight down, make the weight cut a little easier. Got a nutritionist, some strength condition with Phil DeRue. Uh, so... I'm thinking end of August, September. Yeah, is there any particular opponent you would like in your next fight? No, I just, it, it could be whoever. I just need to get a W. It don't really matter who. Just anyone who comes your way or whoever the UFC off, uh, offers you? Well, uh, no, never mind. Uh, I've had somebody call me out a couple of times and then, then he, fought, he fought one of my teammates, new teammates the other night, uh, Kama Worthy. He's been he's been call, calling me out for uh, since the contender. So I've uh, been trying to tell my manager I wanted that fight, and uh, I guess he wasn't interested in it. But maybe now, since Kama's you know be one of our guys from a manager team, and and he he, he looked pretty good. He looked sharp. So uh, yeah, I would like to fight Kama Worthy. Uh, yeah, Kama Worthy's had two UFC fights like yourself, and he's beat uh, Devonte Smith, and he just and you mentioned there he beat your uh, teammate uh, Lewis Pena. And he's beat two good guys in both of them fights. He's been underdog. So how would you see that fight going? Do you reckon you were going there? And maybe would you reckon you would be underdog or he would be underdog? I would be the underdog now because uh, I'm 0 2. My height's gone. Uh, I haven't I haven't really showed I haven't showed up since the contender. So of course I would be an underdog. But I've always fought better when I'm underdog. I've, you know, when all the pressure's on me, I've always, uh, you know, I got my UFC contract and I think I got comfortable. And uh, it, it was not a time to get comfortable. Now I'm uncomfortable. I only got two fights left, maybe one good one, and to get another contract. So all the pressure's on me. Uh, I want a hard opponent. I want to uh, feel scared, nervous, and like this is my last fight ever, you know, so. So I saw in your Instagram that you put up that you were getting ready for fight camp, like you were training to get ready and get ready in shape. Has the UFC offered you an opponent or given you a date for when you could possibly return? Or are you just getting ready, getting your weight down, staying ready, make sure make, might get a like, short notice fight? They told me to let them know when I'm ready. Uh, are you ready? Not right now. No, give how, how long? Two more weeks. Two more weeks. Give me about two more weeks, and then I'll yep. be in fight ready. But right now, I'm, I'm still getting my weight down, and I'm still getting the uh, adjusted to the training down here. Uh, my body's real sore, and uh, as soon as I get some of these kinks out and rust out, I say another week or two, get used to the strength and conditioning program. I'll only be in my fourth session to, uh, starting the night. So. And, uh, yeah, about two more weeks, I should be adjusted to everything, and then I should be hunting a fight, like I said, end of August beginning of September. Is this strength and conditioning program helping you to get more physically fit? Uh, it's run by Phil Daru, which is Dustin Poirier and Amanda and uh, plenty of other uh, top top ranked fighters, truth and conditioning coach for years. Uh, I, I don't care about looking however I look. I'm pretty sure I'll look better, but uh, it's definitely just make me stronger, faster, and, and get my... Uh, uh, motor, my motor skills better, you know, more agile. It's something I've been missing my whole career. I've always really been running my own strength and conditioning and, and stuff. And I've always beat people, I think, with heart and cardio. So, you know, to add somebody else pushing me and to be side by side with other fighters like Mike Davis pushing me and stuff, uh, you know, I think it'll, it'll bring a whole new game out in the next fight. Just 
and I, I'm excited. I, after three sessions, I already feel stronger, faster, and, and more of an athlete. So give me 10 to 15 to 20 sessions. Uh, I'll probably be a whole new animal, man. You know? So uh, there was a photo that you shared on Instagram a while back, and uh, people uh, talked and speculated that you were doing something with dog fighting. Is there anything like you want to address on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not a dog fighter. <laughs> because there was a, the picture of it, it was a dog, and I think people thought it was kind of hurt, maybe bleeding a bit, and people thought you were dog fighting. Yeah, my friend let me keep his dog while him and his girlfriend were going through some problems and he had a pit bull and I have I have two bulldog brothers and I was letting them in the fence I was letting him live in the fence with my dog so I know where know where to put his dog and basically I thought my dog was cool with his dog well he come got his dog and took it home and I guess you know, about three or four months went by and he went to he brought his dog back over to for me to look at his dog and see how healthy it looked because when it was at but when he brought it to me, it was it was really malnutritioned and uh, not taken care of. It ate up with fleas, had worms, and me and my wife have twelve. At the time, we had sixteen dogs, and we were nurture, nurturing hound dogs, uh, hunting dogs, and I mean we're, we're real good with worming puppies and um, get you know making sure they they're they're taken care of and stuff. So. Uh, we helped him out, and I thought his dog was still cool with my dog because they never showed signs to really fight each other or anything. Well, he brung it over there, and my dog ran up to his dog trying to play with it, and his dog snapped and bit my dog's ear. So my dog fought his dog, and I broke him up. By the time I broke him up, uh, you know, it was his my dog. His dog had bit my dog first and bit a little bit of his ear off, and he was bleeding, and I just put out of adrenaline and stuff posted on Instagram and was just tagged my friend and told him, ha ha, my dog, your dog bit my dog's ear off. My dog whooped your dog just playing with him. And, uh, but it was my dumb fault because I can't say stuff like that. Cause people are too sensitive. Like I can't, I can't say like, you know, like now you can't say like I, I'm native, but I grew up with a lot of natives and they feel like my brother. So we say the N word to each other, not calling each other racist, but like, you know, like my brother. But nowadays you cannot say that N word to anybody because of how it be took. You feel me? And I, and I, and I respect that at these times, but just like now I know I have 36,000 followers. I cannot play around about any dog fighting. I can't even say that barely now without people even contradicting i'm a dog fighter like it's ridiculous like i'm like the most known guy on in in my tribe on my reservation in in mobile alabama period and everybody would tell you i've never fought a dog ever now did my dogs fight yeah sometimes they get a loose and they they get male dominance and they fight or they fight over food and i gotta go out there and break them up but if i ever took my dog to a sanctioned uh, out wherever in the middle of nowhere, dog fight illegally, betted and gambled and all that, like Michael Vick, no. So as you said there, while you were answering that question, you said you're a native. Is that where the headpiece comes from? Yes. Where yeah. did that Where did that start, the headpiece? When When did it first come out in the winds? I uh, started doing it in island fights. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was there any reason behind this, or it's just because you were native? Yeah, to recognize Native Americans. There's a lot of people out there that don't even believe that we're still alive. I mean, it's kind of crazy. So, to get Native American recognition every fight. All right, cool. That's cool. So, um, we're, so we'll move on to the next question. So, when you were leading up to a UFC debut against Vargas, how 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 did you feel? Did you did it feel kind of surreal, and did it actually kind of sink in that you were making your UFC debut? It, it come and it came and went. Uh, at times, it felt just like another fight, and sometimes it felt like, wow, you know, I, I made it, I made my dream come true. I made it here. But then, like I said, you know, uh, I felt like I got too comfortable. I felt too good that night. Felt like, uh, you know, it, I'm just supposed to win. You know, it's just not supposed. Uh, it's just meant to be, but it's it's not. And I cannot think like that. I gotta get out there, and I gotta I gotta I gotta show that I, I should be in the UFC, man. You know, I know I should. I, I train. I train with high-level people. I, I win rounds against them. 
I'm one of the best in the world, man. I just gotta get my mind right. I gotta get uh, I gotta get in there and I gotta show I gotta show the world again that I believe that I belong here, you know. So it's just what I gotta do, man. So in your MMA career, you've bounced around from 170 and 155, and you've missed weight a couple of times. And in your last fight, you missed weight against Roberts. Is in your next fight, is it going to be 170 or one or 155? You're going to stay at 155, or you're going to go up? I told my manager I didn't care. You know, whatever they can find me at any time. If they want me to fight at 55, give give me some time to make it. If it's late notice at 170 and I'm ready and I'm in shape, I'll take it. You know. As long as I got five weeks to make fifty five, I can make it. Is it is it a hard cut to get down to one fifty five? It is. If if I'm not if I'm not dieting and staying in shape, you know, which was uh I had been doing for a while, but I had stopped during the quarantine and uh, I was trying a new diet and uh a fat diet a fat diet and no carb diet and it wasn't working out. I was I was eating too much rice, so I was walking around heavy. And then I got the call to take the fight. Uh, <clears throat> told my I told my management I would make weight. And when I got there, I probably would have made weight if the saunas wouldn't have been closed. But Vegas had all the saunas closed, and we had to use portable sauna. And I just my body was already done sweating by the time um, I could really get hot enough to really start sweating good in that thing. So we kind of recap this earlier. We talked about when you moved uh, camps uh, after your last fight, you moved to ATT. And ATT is probably known as probably one of the best gyms in America, and if not in the world. How does it kind of feel to be trained by like a high, really, really high level coaches? Uh, it feels great, man. You know, I'm, I'm living here in a room with King Mo. He shares knowledge daily with me and um, he's, uh, he pushes me in training and, and all the other coaches, man, Mako. The wrestling coach is real cool, and uh, Steve Bruno's a real good striker, uh, striking coach, uh, and and like I said, man, the partners. So it, it, it's on. You know, and just the other day I was grappling around with Mazadal, so it was, it was uh, you know, it, it it is unreal to be uh, training and pushing myself with these guys. And uh, but I also gotta believe I can't can't be a fanboy. You gotta just I gotta know that I should be here. You know, I should be. People should be thinking that too with me, and uh, one day it will be. So Masvidal just took a short notice fight against Usman on six days notice, and you just said there you were grappling with Masvidal. How do you see this fight going on the weekend? Do you see Masvidal uh, bringing the belt back to ATT? Yeah, I do. I think he's ready. Uh, since I've been here, I've been seeing him wrestling with a lot of high level wrestlers. I wrestled with him. Uh, when was it? Wednesday, last Wednesday or Thursday. He felt he felt real strong, real fast. He he went. Uh, I think we went three to five rounds in the cage, mixing in with me and Mike Davis, and um, he 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 was barely tired at all. He he could have he could have went more. I thought so. I think I think he's in great great shape. Uh, Usman's definitely gonna try to wrestle with him. Uh, Mazadal will probably get took down, but I think he'll get up, and that's the key to keep getting up and and get Usman tired from taking him down and and outbox him and catch him with a big counter. You know, a uh, big kick. I think uh, I think he could put Usman away in three. Is that, is that your prediction? He's going to put uh, Jorge is going to put out Usman in three. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on. So, uh, is there anything you're going to change for this camp that you didn't have last camp? We mentioned that your strength and conditioning. That's your, your your fourth time doing strength and conditioning. But is there anything else other than strength and conditioning that you've you're going to change for this camp? Yes, I have a professional nutritionist. Oh fight. yeah. The fight, uh, the fight nutritionist. She actually did Charles Rose's last weight cut too. Cooked his meals. She's actually starting with me today. She's cooking my meals for the weeks and all the way up to the fight. So that takes a big hectic off me when I'm a big 55er. I've never, I've always cut. And me and my wife always is uh, getting my weight cuts and uh, to have a professional nutritionist do all the work and me just eat my way to the scale. Uh, I've never did so. I think that'll be a big game changer too. Uh, so we'll we'll round it off for this last one question. As you uh, said earlier, that you wanted Karma Worthy next. Is there any words you want to say to Karma Worthy before we end the interview? Yo, Karma, I ex I accept. I've been accepting your fight challenge, but I'm really interested now. 
You look good the other night. Let's get in there. Let's bang it out. Let's get a 50K and uh, give me my first win in the UFC. Well, thank you very much, uh, Brock Weaver, for your time. And uh, hopefully in your next fight, we see you get a W. Thank you very much. Yep.